Good morning. Today is Palm Sunday, which probably sounds familiar to most of you, but maybe not to everyone. Did you know that this story of Palm Sunday is one of the few stories that is included in all of the Gospels, including John? That's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John all have some part of the story of Palm Sunday. So this story about Jesus and his entry into Jerusalem must be very important indeed. So let me put up a screen here for you about Holy Week. You see that there? Today is Palm Sunday, Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem we're going to be talking about today. Tomorrow, Monday, commemoration of the clearing of the temple. On Tuesday, Jesus warns the people about the teaching of the Pharisees. And that's really also a part of the topic of today's sermon. Wednesday is unknown. Thursday is Monday Thursday. Many churches either have a special uh, service of foot washing or of communion on, on uh, Monday Thursday. Good Friday, uh, Jesus' betrayal, his sentencing, and crucifixion. We are going to be sending out a powerful video using sand art to tell that story this week. Holy Saturday is next. Jesus is in the tomb. And then finally, Sunday is Easter Sunday, the resurrection. My hope is that the Christian year and the structure that it provides is helpful for you as it is for me. Uh, for people like me, we, we, we crave structure and the Christian year provides that. During Lent, we consider what it means to be human. During Holy Week, we consider each day of the last week of Jesus' life. During the Easter season, we celebrate new life, such as what we're going to experience here at Wesley Church when we are returning to in-person worship on Easter morning next Sunday. But even for those of you who are more free-flow, and I hope you know who you are, there's a place for you to, of course. So today is Palm Sunday, the first day of Holy Week, a day of celebration but also a foreshadowing of things to come. In today's passage, which I trust that you read, the people respond beautifully to Jesus. But by Friday, most of those people have changed their tune. On the way into Jerusalem for the last time, Jesus is downcast, but the people are not. They don't know what will happen next, so they are just enjoying the moment. All they can think about is what they've heard, the stories that they've heard about Jesus, that he healed Lazarus and others, others, that he's a revolutionary and powerful leader, that he's a lover of freedom and of righteousness. In other words, the masses of people outside Jerusalem that day, they've embraced the truth about Jesus. That really is what Jesus has already made plain to his disciples and to anyone who's paying attention. But I find it interesting that the masses of people seem to understand and are jubilant uh, about the arrival of Jesus. But the disciples to, uh, closest to Jesus, the scripture today says that they did not understand. They were still confused as to what was going on. So my question today is, what happened between what you see in this in this slide here, uh, between Palm Sunday and Good Friday. On Palm Sunday, of course, the people are jubilant and they're celebrating and they're worshiping. They had heard of Jesus' uh, miracles and his standing up to authority and they are loving him for it. Listen to what it says. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. And then, by Friday. Do you remember what the crowds are yelling by Friday? Yes, crucify him. Crucify him, they say, and his blood be on us and on our children. They're very strong and powerful and very sad words to hear. What happened between that Palm Sunday and Good Friday? First of all, try to stand in their shoes for a minute. On Palm Sunday, they stopped what they were doing. They gathered palm branches. They headed outside the city gate to meet this man called Jesus. Then, soon after, the Pharisees and other government officials, uh, in one way or another, they convinced the people that Jesus is not who they thought he was. Maybe the people are embarrassed about their uh, believing in Jesus so quickly. Maybe they're asking themselves, how could we have been so naive? 
How could we have been so foolish to fall for the tricks and crafty stories? Or we should have known that Jesus was too good to be true. What happened between Palm Sunday and Good Friday? Well, another answer is that institutionalized religion happened. The people were deceived. Matthew informs us that the chief priests and elders persuaded the crowd to turn on Jesus throughout the week. They convinced the crowds that they had been deceived by a charlatan, like you see in this picture of this uh, of this um, master of card tricks. The religious leadership convinced the people that Jesus was deceiving them. He was not the Messiah, they say. He's not a king. He's not a good person at all, but he's a criminal. He's a charlatan. He's tricking you, and he's worthy of death. The irony, of course, was that it was they, the, relig- the leadership themselves, that were deceiving the people. Due to some quick thinking on the part of the Pharisees and the leaders, the people were deceived. There is a lot of deception going on in our world today, wouldn't you say? Why else would we have such partisan politics? This tells me that people are taking their leadership's words for granted, without questions. And of course, both sides cannot be telling the truth at all times. Politics in general, in my uh, estimation, it, it encourages a, a sort of herd mentality, hoping that the people on their side will not question what they're being told. And apparently we're not questioning what we're being told. Very often we're accepting what we already wanted to believe in the first place and then are being deceived. Or think about the pandemic and the opportunity for deception in in our midst during this time. Many have been misled by desperate and deceptive voices that say the vaccine is ineffective or has terrible side effects. This is called vaccine hesitancy, because people are doubting the value of the vaccine. This same thing has happened in the past when leaders, desperate for attention and a following, told people that the polio vaccine could give you polio or could cause other kinds of terrible side effects. As it turned out, that vaccine was very effective and very safe. Deceptive leaders are in our midst right now, attempting to spread misinformation disguised as the truth. On Palm Sunday, the masses of regular folk like you and me caught a glimpse of the kingdom of God. Jesus is a healer. Jesus is a king. Jesus has come to bring justice to the nations to establish righteousness on earth. All of that was true then as it is now. But we might also be deceived into thinking that no one could be that good, that humble, and that strong. We could be cheated out of the good news, cheated out of the good news, as they were, by the deceptive words of our leadership. By Good Friday, they had completely lost their faith and had turned on Jesus. Let this not happen to us. We must endure the difficult days of Holy Week in order to make it to Easter with our faith intact. One strategy I recommend is to be in a lifelong pursuit of of the truth, to recognize that the truth is in God and of God, recognizing that our leaders are not necessarily the sources of truth that we expect them to be. My suggestion is that you and I, that we be always alert, that we are vigilant, that we not let our guards down. The Apostle Paul says, test all things, hold on to what is good. I put that verse up here on the screen. Remember, I'm not saying that all institutions are evil and should be abolished. I'm not saying don't trust anyone. What I'm saying is take Paul's advice here. Test all things. Hold on to what is good. There is plenty of truth out there for the taking. It's just that truth often has a lot of weeds mixed into it. It's a difficult task to be vigilant at all times, but it's it's necessary in order for us to weed out the lies and hold on to the truth. The Bible itself is packed with truth claims. 
So keep that book close at hand at all times. It will aid and help you in your search for the truth. And then ask God for wisdom, deciphering the truth from falsehood, especially when you have a charismatic leader trying to tell you something or persuade you of something, and especially when you are desperate to believe exactly what that leader is telling you. Beware of your preconceived notions and things that you already wanted to believe in the first place. When a leader simply affirms in you something that you wanted to believe anyway, beware. You've heard it said, don't believe everything you hear. And also, don't believe everything you think either. The truth is usually more of a challenge than lies. Lies are usually easy to believe and do not demand or require much thought. The truth is usually a profound mystery that stretches us, stretches our preconceived notions. If a leader is easy to understand and easy to follow and easy to believe, beware, because the truth is usually more profound than that, more mysterious, and even counterintuitive at times. Lies, on the other hand, are usually very easy to believe. If a leader's words don't stretch you, in order to fit them, then the words are probably a stretch of the truth. Here's my big idea for today. Be vigilant, alert, and aware on a daily crusade, crusade to distinguish truth from falsehood so that you're not deceived and lose your faith like the masses of people did between Palm Sunday and Good Friday. Of course, there are even more sinister and evil powers afoot than politicians and church leaders. How many folks do you think have lost their faith during COVID-19 and this worldwide pandemic? In early March of 2020, they were worshiping church in churches with smiles on their faces and love in their hearts, trust of God. But by March of 2021, they have their doubts about the whole need for church or worship or even God's love for them. Continue to live your life in joyful celebration of Christ despite the voices in your head that don't care about your well-being. The good news for us today is not that Jesus is going to save the world from coronavirus, because for all intents and purposes, the vaccines are doing that very well. The good news is that Jesus was here all along, throughout this whole year. And he cares for us, and he cares for the world, despite the suffering. Remember Jesus' compassion on the crowds outside Jerusalem? The scripture says, when Jesus saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. A shepherd represents a good leader who cares for the sheep and will lay down his or her life for the sheep. That's what we need and that's what we have in Christ. There is no deception in him, only truth, justice, and mercy. Mercy. Jesus is that good shepherd who lays down his life for us. Let us pray. Merciful God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, hear our prayer this day. Many times we feel like sheep, without a shepherd, harassed and helpless. We are vulnerable to charismatic leaders and deceptive influence. Even our friends can mislead us. Help us to be vigilant, aware, and alert that we might weed out the lies from the truth. Amen. And amen.